If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. But if we confess our sins, God, who is faithful and just, will forgive our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Let us then confess our sins to God our Father. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sin. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Shout for joy to God, all the earth, alleluia. Sing the glory of his name. Give to him glorious praise. Alleluia. Come and see what God has done. He is awesome in his deeds toward the children of man. Who has kept our soul among the living and has not let our feet slip? joy to God, all the earth, alleluia, sing the glory of his name, give to him glorious praise, alleluia. In peace, let us pray to the Lord, Lord mercy. for the peace from above and for our salvation, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, mercy. For the peace of the whole world, for the well-being of the Church of God, and for the unity of all, let us pray to the Lord. Lord mercy. For this holy house, and for all who offer here their worship and praise, let us pray to the Lord. Lord Help, save, comfort, and defend us, gracious Lord.
let us pray. Almighty God, you show those in error the light of your truth, so that they may return to the way of righteousness. Grant faithfulness to all who were admitted into the fellowship of Christ's church, that they may avoid whatever is contrary to the confession and follow all such things as are pleasing to you. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Old Testament reading for the fourth Sunday of Easter is from Isaiah chapter 40. To whom then will you compare me that I should be like him, says the Holy One? Lift up your eyes on high and see who created these. He who brings out their host by number, calling them all by name, by the greatness of his might, and because he is strong in power, and not one is missing. Why do you say, O Jacob, and speak, O Israel, my way is hidden from the Lord, and my right is disregarded by my God? Have you not known? Have you not heard? The Lord is the everlasting God, the creator of the ends of the earth. He does not faint or grow weary. His understanding is unsearchable. He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. Even youth shall faint and be weary, and young men shall fall exhausted. But they who wait for the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount, shall mount up with wings like eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk and not faint. This is the word of the Lord. is from 1 John chapter 3. See what kind of love the Father has given to us, that we should be called children of God. And so we are. The reason why the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Beloved, we are God's children now, and what we will be has not yet appeared. But we know that when he appears, we shall be like him, because we shall see him as he is. And everyone who thus hopes in him purifies himself as he is pure. This is the word of the Lord.
Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 16th chapter. Jesus said, A little while, and you will see me no longer. And again, a little while, and you will see me. So some of his disciples said to one another, what is that he, said, that he says to us? A little while and you will not see me, and again a little while and you will see me, and because I am going to the Father? So they were saying, what does he mean by a little while? We do not know what he is talking about. Jesus knew that they wanted to ask him, so he said to them, is this what you're asking yourselves, what I meant by saying, a little while and you will not see me, and again a little while and you will see me? Truly, truly, I say to you, you will weep and lament, but the world will rejoice. You will be sorrowful, but your sorrow will turn into joy. When a woman is giving birth, she has sorrow because her hour has come. But when she has delivered the baby, she no longer remembers the anguish for the joy that a human being has been born into the world. So also, you have sorrow now, but I will see you again and your hearts will rejoice and no one will take your joy from you. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
is our hope, sustains us in anguish and tears and anger and frustration and abuse. The word of the resurrection. Christ for us and ours in him, the great resurrection that is to come, that word sustains and brings happy hearts, whatever the world might bring. We cling to the word and without it we are undone, and with it we have life unto everlasting. So this Sunday in Easter, the words of Jesus that his disciples, even at his death, might have hope. A little while, you won't see me, and again a little while, and you will see me. Can you imagine to be Nicodemus, who came by night to Jesus, and then who came by day to Pilate. Can you imagine to be Nicodemus and Joseph of Arimathea who owned the tomb and have those, what, 70 pounds of spices and the dead body of Jesus in your arms in haste to go with this burden to try to anoint it as best you can before the day ends to attend to his wounds to care for the body to lay it in the grave Can you imagine that night for Joseph and Nicodemus maybe somewhere lost in the recesses this word a little while and you won't see me and then again a little while and you will see me even as they carry Jesus body to the grave can you imagine to go from laying that body in the tomb to grasping that resurrected body as it says then Peace be unto you. It seems as though the disciples weren't even at the cross, save one, John, but the rest too scared, apparently, at least to be anywhere close, that they would join Jesus, even though they had professed, as Peter had done, surely I will even die with you. But yet then, behind locked doors, they have to bear in their consciences the crucified Christ, whom they had deserted, who had told them it would be so, and they had argued it would not. Somewhere in their minds, perhaps these words, a little while, and you will not see me, and again a little while, and you will see me. And so even in anguish, the word was could be, and now is, man's hope. The word of Jesus' resurrection. Without it, we are fools, so St. Paul. But with it, we are those who join the one who has risen from the dead for us. In word and in sacrament and in body, the great day that is to come. You peer into those lives. Thomas, who is pissed off, angry, fuming 
fermenting at everyone. We thought this was our home. So don't tell me about a little while, because it's not true. And yet the word there to comfort and gladden those who refuse to believe. And can you imagine the repentance he knew? Or that you have known when you have been so angry and have been convicted and have by God's grace been forgiven by Christ's death for you and by those who love you and who put your hope in that same resurrection where Jesus declares peace be to you a little while and you will not see me and again a little while and you will see me it is Jesus work to open our eyes and to sustain us as we wait for him to now come again to bring that life to bear on us and on the world. He didn't forget Mary and he didn't forget his brother James and he didn't even forget Saint Paul with his murderous intent and so also, dear Church of God, cling to these words, a little while and you will not see me, and again a little while and you will see me. For it is Christ's pattern. He has been true to what he said, and he will be true to what he promises to you and to your children and to your children's children. A little while applies first and foremost to Christ's death when they wouldn't see him and to Christ's resurrection when they then would see him but now here it is after Easter and we hear this text every year and we can't help but applying it to the life we now live in the New Testament age. We can't help but applying it to Christ coming again with the great resurrection of all bodies, once and for all. A little while you will see me, a little while you won't. And when you see me again, you will have joy that no one can take from you. And you will remember your sorrows no more. Now we live in a little while. But don't say as a Christian that the day of our joy is just yet to come. Because the joy that comes to the disciples comes with Christ's resurrection and no one can take it from them. Joy that can't be taken even under martyrdom. So maybe now a little while we wait and the world stands against Christ and the church and the gospel but it's not a joy that is yet to come for the resurrection has been brought to bear so now the gospel brings to you a joy they can't have and that no one no matter what they do can separate from your person that Christ is risen and he is yours and you are his and he has not held your anger or your desertion, or your sins, 
or the abuse your body has taken against you, but he has stood with those hands and that side and he has said, peace be to you. A little while and the disciples would have joy. A little while and ours will be unbridled joy. But now in the gospel of Christ's resurrection, a joy to us. We yet live this life that cannot be taken. No matter how your week goes, no matter how your family stands or falls, no matter what your mind has done, your doubts or your sins, this joy can't be separated this very minute from you. Christ is yours, and you are his. A little while you will see me again, Jesus says, and I will see you again. Jesus says, and as we sing, I know that my Redeemer lives, even Job said, a little while and I'll see him again. And so the resurrection puts our eyes to Jesus, we will see him again. And it puts Job's eyes to Jesus as at the very beginning of the world, he said, I with my own eyes after I have died, knowing my Redeemer lives, I will see Jesus. And then Jesus here says, you have tears now, but I will see you again. And no one will take your joy from you. You will see Jesus again. And those you love who have died in Christ, who have hoped in the resurrection with them, seeing Jesus, will you so see Jesus? And so we wait for Christ, but here, here, you have tears now, but I will see you again. And so Christ is hoping for the day where he sees you, and he sees me, and he sees his church in glory. It's a little while, and we eagerly wait, and it's a little while, and the dead eagerly wait, and it's a little while, and Jesus eagerly waits to bring the resurrection to bear in full on his church. Joy in the gospel now and in that day. No more tears, no more trouble, because Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Alleluia. Peace of God, which passes all understanding, guard your hearts and minds through faith in Christ Jesus. Amen. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth. And in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered as a conscious pilot, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and he sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole Church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. 
Heavenly Father, with joy, the church continues to celebrate the resurrection victory of your beloved Son. Look in mercy on all who have been baptized into his death and resurrection, and grant them grace each day to die to sin and rise to newness of life with him. Fountain of mercy, you call your people to love and to serve those in need. Pour out your blessing on the mercy work of our synod and Christ Church throughout the world, that through devoted service many may come to know and praise your unspeakable kindness and love. King of kings and Lord of lords, to you we commend our public servants in this land. Bless and prosper them in their callings. Remember all who serve in our armed forces. Graciously hinder everything in our common life that is contrary to your will, and establish and strengthen every good endeavor. Gentle and loving one, in the vocation of motherhood, you have given us a sign of your own unfailing tenderness and love for your children. Bless and strengthen all whom you have called to this high vocation. Enable us all to remember the gift which has been given to us when our mothers gave birth to us. Lord of kindness and compassion, your son throughout his ministry healed the sick and relieved the distressed. Remember in tenderness those who are in need of his healing balm today, especially Diana Laudenbach, Arliss Van Ness, Verona Huckabee, Gary Gokey, the family of the child accidentally killed in the Vines neighborhood, and those who mourn and those who are trying to help. By your Holy Spirit's power, grant them grace to entrust themselves entirely to his loving care. Gracious Master, your beloved Son summons us to the table he prepares so we may partake of his holy body and blood for the forgiveness of sins, for a share in his own divine life and for our everlasting salvation. Grant us repentance and faith that we may receive this Eucharist in a worthy manner and to our abundant blessing. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Welcome to all of you this morning. We pray God's rich and abundant blessing be to you. As we celebrate now Christ's body and blood given for Christians uh, to eat and drink according to the forgiveness of sins. Uh, the Lord's Supper, we announce we do so with care, practicing close communion. If you're not a member of our church or the Lutheran Church of Missouri Synod, and you would like to receive the Lord's Supper with us, we ask that you would speak to us uh, about this in our parish uh, before doing so. Uh, we may help you in any way. Uh, that would be our sure joy and honor. Uh, we might ask you to fill out the visitor card in the queue if you would like.
unto the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. And most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and bore the sin of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death, and by his rising again, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven. We laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also, he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do, as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
depart in peace.
Christ. body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace.
let us pray. Gracious, gracious God, our Heavenly Father, you have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the Holy Supper of your Son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming, we may together with all your saints celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb and his kingdom which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.